What is up, everybody? I hope all of you guys are having an amazing day. And today, we're doing What If Deku Was a Kaiju? I know what all of you guys are thinking. Like, what do you mean? What if Deku was like a Godzilla or something like that? This is gonna be a bit different, and this is gonna be based off Kaiju number eight. So if you haven't read this manga, I don't know what you're doing. Like, go, go find a website or something to go read this manga since it's been like out for like two or three years. This is an amazing manga. I think all of you guys should be reading it. Other than that, let's get started with the video. I live inside my own world of make-believe Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep I love everything Fire spreading all around my room My world's so bright It's hard to breathe But that's alright Hush Okay, we're gonna start off this what if with a bit of world building So, Deku's born into this world Into a world where monsters exist Or known as Kaiju And as these monsters grow So do the humans Soon enough people started to develop quirks and 80% of the population was able to harness a quirk and people started to be able to defend themselves from these monsters. And still, even though people were kind and everything and using their quirks for good, some were bad apples and, you know, started going the evil route. And soon enough, people were able to kill monsters with ease and soon villains started to prevail as well. And that's where the era of all for one began. But one person stood against all of this, and his name was All Might, as he was a mighty hero who fought against All for One, the root of evil, and started a new age, the golden age of heroes, as heroes would help defeat Kaiju and also other villains as well, as they would defend the people. And soon enough, they were able to create suits that helped them with this, as they used the Kaiju's muscle fibers to harness the full power of the heroes and also their quirks, as it also enhanced their powers greatly as well. But even though some people can harness the full potential of the kaiju's muscle fibers and some couldn't, one thing was for sure. People who were quirkless couldn't use the kaiju's muscle fibers at all. So we start off our story with Izuku being born. And this is pretty much a regular birth, just like in the anime. And so he's born quirkless and he also basically is weak and is a fanboy for All Might ever since he see, saw him defeating Kaiju and also saving multiple people as he watches the rewatches of those videos multiple times a day. But when Deku found out that he didn't have a quirk, he was pretty much devastated. He didn't know what to do. He didn't have a quirk. He couldn't use the Kaiju super suits without you having a quirk. And so Deku thought to himself, after listening to the words of All Might to never give up, he decided that he's not going to give up himself and he's going to find a way to become a hero, no matter what. And so, Deku would go to his dad's work, where his dad's work involved cleaning up after all the heroes after they defeat the kaiju, as he would cut open all the bodies of the kaiju and everything to, you know, dismantle and basically send all the parts that they can use to the heroes and basically throw everything else away as Izuku would go to his work often to understand the kaiju's anatomy and just see how the heroes would fight as he was just amazed by all of them and he wanted to see All Might if All Might ever wanted to come and fight. And so Deku would go to his dad's work often, but sometimes when he doesn't get to go, he would immediately after his dad came home would ask his dad what happened at work, what kaiju he dismantled and what heroes he saw fight as he would ask for all the details. But soon, time passed and Deku kept on doing this. He would go to his dad's work and also train his body to make sure that he's fit and physically ready. So he, if he ever gets that chance, he can try to become a hero just like All Might. But soon enough, time passed by and time passed by way too quickly. Izuku was already in his last year of middle school and was about to go to high school and he had nothing to show for it. Even though he trained each day and taught himself about kaiju anatomy and how to be heroic from All Might and everything else that he did, he was still pretty much useless against people who have quirks. And after they get their kaiju super suits, he's basically done for. He's just a regular civilian. And soon enough, Izuku was losing hope slowly. 
but it also didn't help that Bakugo was bullying him each day, making fun of him for not having a quirk, and that he has dreams of becoming a hero which won't be accomplished. But Izuku to the bitter end never gave up, even though he was lo losing hope slowly. But one day after Izuku got home, his dad immediately bombarded him with an internship opportunity at his work, where it says that he has a higher chance into getting into his dream high school, which was UA. And all he needed to do was learn the Kaiju's anatomy. And Izuku, after going to his dad's work multiple times a day, and also just, you know, going there for fun on the weekends, would learn the Kaiju's anatomy multiple times, and also have a friendly relationship with some heroes. As he would also learn multiple things about this internship that he also needs to help with a disposal and Deku was never allowed to do this and he was kind of happy since he always wanted to help his dad with his work and so he immediately applied for the internship and so when he got there he saw another kid as well he had half red hair and half white hair as he went up to the kid and asked him what he was here for as he said that he was here for the internship as Deku smiled and said that he was also here for the internship as well as Todoroki immediately asked Deku what his quirk was, as Deku didn't respond and immediately changed the subject, asking him who his favorite hero was, and if he's trying to get extra credit to, you know, get into UA. But then Todoroki responds back, seeming to not care, as he tells Izuku that he doesn't have a favorite hero at all, and that he's here for the interview and that's all the information that he's going to be giving him. As Izuku's confused why Todoroki is on guard right now, since it's not a competition for the interview and anyone can get into the interview. As Izuku's confused and tells Todoroki this, as Todoroki says that he knows, as Izuku is just, you know, even more confused. Then, Izuku's dad steps out and says that he needs to make sure that he knows who the interns are as he looks at Izuku and says that he already knows who Izuku is since, you know, he's his son. As he looks at Todoroki and points to him and asks him who he is. As he says that his name is Todoroki and that he's Endeavor's son and he's here for the internship. As Izuku looks at Todoroki, confused at what he just heard, as he just heard that he was the son of the second best hero. Immediately, Izuku goes bombarding Todoroki with questions about Endeavor and how he's like, you know, he's his son and everything. But Todoroki seems to not care as he just continues to look forward. As all of a sudden, alarms start to ring off as Izuku's dad says that they better get ready as Izuku smiles as all of them start to move out to go clean up a kaiju's dead body. And so when the dismantling slash cleanup crew get there, they start to dismantle and, you know, just cut open the kaiju's body so they can clean it up and send all the important resources back to the heroes. And so while they're doing this, Izuku starts explaining all the kaiju's anatomy to Todoroki, as Todoroki's like listening to Izuku but still seems to not care. But then, Izuku, getting frustrated with this, asks Todoroki why the real reason why he's here. Since, definitely, the second best hero has way more better opportunities in getting you into UA than going to an internship to dismantle a kaiju's body. As Todoroki looks at Izuku and tells him that he's right, and that he's here because of his dad, and his dad made him do this, and that he doesn't really want to be here. But then all the other dismantling members and the cleanup members start to leave as they cleaned up all the parts of the kaiju's body that they were supposed to clean up as, as Izuku's dad starts to leave as well as he tells Izuku to you know finish it up and just to meet them outside. As they're about to finish dismantling the whole kaiju's body, all of a sudden a smaller kaiju comes up and is about to attack you know Todoroki and Todoroki not noticing this Izuku immediately rushes in and tackles Todoroki to the side saving Todoroki from attack from the smaller kaiju but this left Izuku open as the smaller kaiju was about to attack Izuku and immediately kill him but in a time of rage Todoroki immediately took an ice spear and stabbed it in the smaller kaiju's eye you know completely hurting it as both of them were getting ready to leave, all of a sudden the smaller kaiju gets back up again and is about to rush at them, but all of a sudden a huge flame engulfs the smaller kaiju as Endeavor flies down, saving the both of them. But as Izuku was thanking Endeavor and, you know, trying to get his autograph and things like that, Todoroki immediately just leaves, not wanting to see Endeavor or thank him at all. 
and while they were getting their heels wounded and everything, they were both admitted to the hospital that night. And while they were there, they were talking to each other, as Zuku learned many things about Todoroki. As Todoroki decided that, you know, they saved each other, he would open up a bit, as he learned that Endeavor wasn't the best dad ever, and, you know, he was just, you know, a scumbag in general. As Zuku learned that Todoroki's quirk was icy hot, and fire. As, Todoroki, as Izuku, you know, puts two things together, as he's like, ah, you know, he has red hair and white hair. As Todoroki laughs, saying that this is the first time that he's ever laughed in a while. As all of a sudden, a huge bug-like monster appears in front of Izuku. As the blinds between Todoroki and Izuku are closed, as Todoroki has no clue what's happening, as the bug-like creature tells Izuku that he finally found him, as it immediately goes into Izuku's mouth, engulfing him as Izuku passes out. And when Izuku wakes up again, it's in the middle of the night. As he opens the blinds between Todoroki and him, he sees that Todoroki is still awake. As Todoroki looks shocked looking at Izuku, as he's completely stunned. As he's looking at Izuku, Todoroki immediately gets angry and makes an ice spear about to kill Izuku as he lunges at Izuku as Izuku is completely confused what's going on. As Todoroki asks like this kaiju beast type thing where Izuku is, as Izuku is completely confused what Todoroki is talking about, as he tells Todoroki that it's him and asks him why he's attacking him. As Todoroki is stunned and asks Izuku if that's really him, as Izuku's completely confused what he's even talking about. As Todoroki asks Izuku to prove it, as Izuku repeats a line that Todoroki said earlier. As Todoroki is stunned, he decides that this is Izuku, wondering why Izuku turned into a monster, as Izuku's completely confused what Todoroki is even talking about again. Then. Izuku looks into the mirror as he's completely stunned asking Todoroki if that's even really him as he notices a giant beast sitting on his bed as he has a skull shaped mask as it also looks really similar to like the thumbnail that I put and he just has a greener blemish as Izuku is completely confused but Izuku feels a lot stronger more capable but then all of a sudden the same alarms start going off but this time, it's for a kaiju who is still inactive, as many people are rushing from like building to building trying to get out, as Izuku notices the kaiju as it's really close to the hospital, as Izuku decides that he's gonna go try fighting this kaiju. As Izuku is about to jump out the window, Todoroki tells him to stop, asking what he's gonna do if someone sees him. As Izuku says that he wants to test out his new abilities, as he jumps out of the building, as he's hopping from building to building trying to get to the kaiju. When he gets there, he sees the kaiju about to attack a civilian, as he immediately rushes in, landing a fatal blow to the kaiju, as it immediately dissipates as a huge explosion and crater come from Izuku's single punch. And so, just for reference, he was basically one punch man here, just so you know, you know. And so as we continue with the story, Izuku looks back at the civilians as they look at him in terror and immediately run away as Izuku is completely confused why they just ran away and realizes that he's in his monster form as he's also really confused in how he's supposed to get out of his monster form as well. As he also wonders even if he can get out of his monster form as he's trying to willfully trying to go back to his human state but Izuku really can't as he's wondering how he's supposed to go back. But then, Izuku sees a silhouette of a similar figure. It looks like All Might, as Izuku is about to go, you know, say hi to this person. But all of a sudden, Todoroki immediately drops, kicks, you know, Izuku. As Izuku stumbles back and, you know, falls down. As Todoroki tells him that he needs to get away. Or if the heroes see him, they're gonna kill him. As Izuku immediately runs away, realizing that he's a monster now. As he's wondering in how he can get back to his human form. So both of them go hide away from all the heroes that were arriving. And as they both get to the hospital again, they try to figure out if Izuku can even turn back into his human state. As they figure out that whenever Izuku's calm, he can turn back into his human state. And after a bit of training, Izuku learns in how to control his you know, transformation instantaneously and also at will. 
And so the next day, Izuku goes to his internship job. And when he gets there, he's just dismantling, you know, regular monsters as usual, as he's also talking to Todoroki about the UA entrance exam, hearing that it's very difficult to get in, and that they need to be able to use their super suit's capability of at least 1% to even get into UA. And so, Izuku wonders himself, even if he really can have this new ability, can he really access 1% of the super suit to even be able to get into UA? As Izuku wonders to himself, like wondering if he really has the capability. As Todoroki tells Izuku a bit of his, you know, kaiju abilities are slipping out as he immediately drop kicks Izuku as Izuku is thrown back. As Izuku gets up again, you know, he corrects himself, saying that he needs a little bit more training with this ability, as he's about to head home. As Todoroki says goodbye, as Izuku does as well, as Izuku is leaving, he goes under a bridge, and then all of a sudden, he feels an ominous figure behind him, as he immediately turns back. And that's where we're going to be ending off the what if. I mean, I hope you guys like the what if. I mean, even though it's mainly based off of Kaiju number eight, Kaiju number eight was a dope manga and I may have spoiled a bit here and there. I mean, it's not like I spoiled One Piece, okay? So far, what's going on in One Piece is insane. And I'm going to be probably doing a what if on that soon as well when, is you know, Luffy's thing gets revealed. Okay, I'm not going to spoil anything more than that. But if you, if you guys look down, just scroll down a bit. Uh, Okay, if you scroll down, you're good now. So there's gonna be a red button. Just, just take your ring on or something like a Chidori and just smack it, okay? And scroll back up, and you're gonna see a, like a like button. Hit that as well. The YouTube algorithm likes that, okay? And it's gonna help expand our community in general, okay? Other than that, you know, we're trying to get to 3K, and you know, 3K is our goal right now. And uh, you know, we're trying to you know get people into our Discord as well. So don't forget to join the Discord. And other than that, guys, I hope all of you guys are having a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys later.